Hello and hey. welcome. It's January 2022. 2022. Um, 2022. Oh my god. Oh. It's the future. It's the future. It is. Um, it's been a while since we've done one of these. I think the last one was November. And yeah. we have been, well, I say we, the elves at DocuSign over the holiday period put out a new release while I was off eating a lot of chocolate. <laughs> They put, it, they put it out in December, late, like mid-December. Yeah, mid-December. But, we are, but, but we, we have, we've done stuff. We, we went on vacation. People, we people were. Take a um, break. Even you and I get to take a break, right? Well, your break was different. You were sunning yourself, whereas I was sitting on the sofa with a whole load of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so different it's, vacations. Uh, everything's, it's a break. As, as long as you think it's a break, it's a break, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, hello everyone. I'm Lauren Dunn, Senior Salesforce Evangelist at DocuSign, and I am joined by... Hi, I'm Greg Hardigan. I'm a Senior Tech Writer at DocuSign. So, we bring you the release updates for DocuSign for Salesforce, or the DAL DocuSign Apps Launcher, um, so that you don't have to read them, make it a little bit easier on you folks. So, with that, I am going to switch over to the presentation. This is Apps Launcher 4.0. I know. I'm calling, it, I'm calling it the January release because, mm -hmm. well, yeah, it it goes into full release on the App Exchange in January. So yeah, that's fine. Exactly. Um, so everything that we're talking about, it's live now on the App Exchange. Yep, uh, it should be. Yeah, um, and I'm uh, I'm, I'm feeling it's weird because I was around for the beginning of App Launcher. For the I feel like it's one of my children, and I'm like, oh, I remember when you were like a 1.0. You were just oh. a little guy. <laughs> and it's it's grow look how look how it's grown. It's, Just wait till it, it starts talking back to you. They, <laughs> they grow up so fast. I hate you. You're not my father. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, heard that one. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go on with some new arrivals that have happened for the DocuSign apps launcher. Um and e-signature for Salesforce is up first. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of stuff with this. Um did. uh some of this is is a little uh 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 what did, it, what did it say? Uh, cart before the horse? Yeah, cart before the horse. Yeah, um, yeah so this one is uh, unlock access code and private message input fields for template recipients. We mm -hmm. just added the ability for senders to edit the access code and private message fields um, when you are creating an envelope from an envelope template button or with a standard send for DocuSign button mm -hmm. uh, that are linked to templates from a DocuSign account. Uh, and you normally, uh, in the past, you couldn't uh, edit those fields. They were locked down. So we're opening it up letting you uh, mess with it. Ooh, I like to play with things and break it. Yep, and if you put the wrong number in, it's on you, it's not on us. <laughs> which is probably why they don't have me testing the product very often, because <laughs> I do break it. We're yeah. just enablers, we're not, we're not, we're not the, we don't yeah. put the numbers in for you. Cool. Next one we have is allow CC only recipients to be added during quick send. Yeah, this is so excited for. This is a nice little ad, yeah, because um, the, the quick send uh, sending experience, you, you want to make things simple for the, the envelope creator and sender. You just yep. give them one page and they just can only do a couple things on it. But uh, people wanted to, the ability to add uh, someone who just sees uh, the envelope and doesn't have to sign it or act on it. So we, we've enabled that. You can add a CC only recipient. Someone can only view it. And uh, yeah, in the quick send experience. Yeah. And as a past Salesforce admin, this one, having streamlined processes, definitely a win. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, next one we have is increase the maximum number of file name characters when sending. This is for people who like to be verbose, as we like to say. When we we like to me? name name your uh, your documents more than eighty characters. Um, oh, you're talking about me. <laughs> for some people, <laughs> eighty characters is enough. But it will be a, a fine amount of characters. But for others, they say no. Give me all the characters. Um, so. Yeah. Even though they're only 26 characters in English. Here you language. are. Here's the characters. I mean, come on. How many characters do you need? But uh, we, <laughs> Lauren is, is slicing off characters left and right. Um, yeah. This lets you put as many as you want in here. Um, however, uh, when you're in the sending experience, it will show the full file name. When the, uh, the document is saved back to Salesforce, it will truncate the file name that you can see mm -hmm. to 80 characters. It doesn't mean it 
it changes the file name. It just means you can only view um, 100, I'm sorry, uh, 100 characters when they're, when they're written back to Salesforce. So. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, I yep. definitely think that our team had me in mind when they created this one. <laughs> I actually feel like a lot of this release is, oh, okay, let's just think of the customer as Lauren and okay. let's make all the problems. So there you <laughs> so, go. You're so welcome. It's all, it's all about you is what you're saying. Del, Del Foro, it's, it's just for you. Of course it's all for me. <laughs> okay. Next one hey, is. The engineers have a picture of you with that tiara on the wall behind them as they work. I'm, you know, hang on. Let's let's stop and still. It's, it's I know you're going to print screen that one, Greg. <laughs> um, next one is sender can apply a core DocuSign template to an e-signature for Salesforce envelope. Yeah, this is a big one. Uh, this is actually quite big. Um, so. A lot of people, when uh, they start using uh, the product in Salesforce, they already have a DocuSign account that they've already built templates in. Yeah. They don't. They do not want to go back into Salesforce and recreate these templates in Salesforce. They've already made them. Sometimes it was kind of a lot of work to make them. Uh, so what, they I'm want... lazy. <laughs> what did you say? I'm lazy. Oh, you're lazy. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it's not lazy. It's just efficiency, right? Like I, I feel really like this is not la about lazy la laziness. This is just about like. I don't want to do it again. I already did it. Working smarter, not harder. Exactly, smarter, not harder. Exactly. So uh, in this case, we are now letting you when you when you click a standard out of the box uh, DocuSign um, send with DocuSign button in Salesforce, we are letting the envelope uh, creator pick existing templates, uh, one or more, mm -hmm. from the core DocuSign account and just import them. Not really import them, but use them. You know, yeah. uh, in the in the envelope. And they can, uh, you know, select or apply one or more templates. Mm -hmm. uh, they can uh, see the template documents, recipients, and settings in the envelope before they send it, so they see what you're getting. Yeah. You know, in case you didn't remember what was in that template, you're like, oh, here it is. Uh, you can add new signers and recipients to the envelope. You can add new, uh, new documents to the envelope. You can uncheck documents so that they aren't in the envelope. If they were in the template, you can say, I don't want this one. Cool. I want this one instead. And you can edit the uh, email subject and the message content. Uh, there is a whole lot of other stuff you can do. Oh, We're not going to enumerate everything you can do, there which was is like a ton. A, there was like but, a list, like a, almost a page long list yeah. of things you can do. So I will link that either above or below, depending on where you're watching this. But I will link it in this video somewhere where you can access the release notes to read. Whole and here thing. and here is one once again where it comes up to uh, smarter not harder right like this is i already wrote it yeah. i already wrote stuff i don't want to <laughs> repeat every single detail from the release notes because we already made them so uh if people want to hear more details about it they can uh yeah just look at the release notes. but tldr there's loads of things you can do so yeah unlocked a lot of stuff yeah next one is the docusign apex toolkit yeah, and this is uh, uh, this is mainly about the um, the desire for people to use the Apex Toolkit to prevent uh, recipients from receiving uh, an email about every single thing that happens with an envelope, right? Yeah. So we send people an envelope using the Apex Toolkit, um, and we want them to just get the notification that hey, you you have a new you know document to act upon. Um, we don't want them to say like. Hey, so and so viewed the envelope. Uh, so and so opened the envelope. So and so signed. You know, this just lets you boil it down to like just getting the basic envelope um, message that you uh, that you want. So this is the TLDR. Was it TL? Yeah, TLDR. TLDR. Yeah, TLDR. Yeah. Right, yeah. Apex Toolkit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, basically, um, because there's a lot of stuff going on in the background that that, that went into you know making this feature, but uh, mm -hmm. boiling it down, it's just we want to prevent users from receiving all kinds of emails when they don't want it. Yep. Related Love to the it. signature process. Yeah. I spent the last two days when I got back from holidays for like de spamming. It was, all, <laughs> it was like 400 spams. I was like, oh my God. I actually do that on uh, when I'm on vacation. I'll still do it. I'll, I'll look at my phone at least once a day and just nope. get rid of stuff because I nope. don't want to come back <laughs> to this avalanche of garbage. Nope. And, I actually removed despairing. I removed all apps, all emails, Slack. I removed it all. It's I a bold do both. Move. It's a I bold know. Move. That's why yeah. I'm smiling. 
<laughs> Next up, right we on. have CLM for Salesforce. So automate federated search for DocuSign apps launcher version of CLM. Yeah, Coming and for those who don't know, this there are there are sort of two versions of uh, CLM. There's the original product that was called Spring CM, and um, DocuSign acquired that company and kept uh, the Spring CM. It's called CLM.CM internally, kind of for um, the customers that have that. And then off of that platform, developed a, a new product uh, mm -hmm. called DocuSign CLM. Um, so we are now in the process of you know shoring up uh, the differences between the products. Um, so getting parity. One of the parity features that has been on the list for a while is federated search. And that means that you can set up um, your, your Salesforce uh, org to also surface DocuSign CLM documents in a search. So when you go to the main Salesforce search bar, you enter a search query and hit enter. It's going to give you all the results from Salesforce. And then there's also a little category in the bottom um, that it shows you DocuSign search results. So you can click that and it'll show you all the CLM documents that match your query as well. So, woo, woo. yep, just kind of merging the search features from both products and letting uh, the users find CLM stuff more easily inside of Salesforce. And for those of you who are watching, Greg is a Spring CM guru. So, any hard hitting questions on Spring CM? Hit him up. I, was, I, I worked for Spring Sam for like four four years uh, yeah. before the acquisition. I, I was a trainer and stuff like that too. So I still go to you for all my Spring Sam questions. <laughs> Just saying. I'm here. I'm here for you. Feel the love. It? Feel the love, Greg. Um, <laughs> next up, we have some fixes. Fixes. And a lot of it is with the DocuSign status uh, component where you, you can add a component to a Salesforce page yep. that shows you the status of your DocuSign envelopes. So like they're sent, they've been received, they're completed, stuff like that. Um, so we fixed an issue with the orders sent envelopes that were displayed. Uh, it used to have the, um, in, uh, they sorted from the oldest to the newest. Mm. So the oldest were on top when really you're probably more likely to want to look really quickly at a Salesforce page and see what the new stuff is. Yep. So now they sort from newest to oldest as you know, you'd expect them to. Um, yep. Yeah, that's this one. It's like when you're online shopping, you always go price lowest to highest. Price lowest to highest. Or is that just me? Because like, well, uh, sometimes I go by average rating, but then they they stuff the ballots a lot of times on those. Oh. Like the company will send out like, we'll give you a ten dollar Amazon gift card if you give us a good review. So yeah, yeah. can't so, wait to trust that. I fall in love with like the really expensive handbag online, and then I realize it's over two thousand dollars, and that's like just oh. too much for a yeah, fucking handbag. So Are you kidding me? Throw Nothing's that right good. Way. Nothing's that good. No, definitely not. Rather fly Next one somewhere. up is we have envelope sender uh, changes in Salesforce if a user accesses the Salesforce record. Yeah, this is a weird one. Uh, it's an edge case, but we figured it's worth mentioning. Um, where uh, so, and this is only if administrators uh, check the page. So, like, if someone uh, sent an envelope uh, from Salesforce uh, with a send with DocuSign button, mm -hmm. and then an administrator. Uh, access that Salesforce record to check it out. In the envelope uh, status component, they would suddenly show as the sender, which was confusing to people. And it stayed after they left. Another user would come back, and it mm -hmm. would still show them as the uh, the sender. Um, so it didn't happen that much, but it, it did happen enough that it confused people. And we have fixed this. Mm -hmm. So now uh, the sender is the sender. Uh, the admin, If the admin looks at a page, it's cool. They looked at the page. It doesn't change who sent it. It didn't change anything in the envelope, mm -hmm. like that. Unreal. An administrator, yeah. It, when the envelope process was completed and stuff like that, it didn't have any of that stuff change. Just in the envelope, um, yeah, component, uh, the envelope status component. That's the only place it showed inaccurately. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So Snoopy admins, we have your back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was a Snoopy admin. Um, yeah. Next one up is date aligned with completed date in the DocuSign envelope status component when sent from a Salesforce record. Whew. There's another one, envelope status. Um, envelope status, we've been watching you. Um, <laughs> you've been bad, so we fixed you. Uh, yeah. So yeah, when the, uh, when the signing process was completed, uh, the sent date and time switched to match the completed date and time. So there's another switcheroo where like, 
is you sent it on Tuesday at 5 a.m. or whatever if you're an early riser. And then um, when it completed on Wednesday at, at 10 p.m., mm -hmm. that would suddenly show as the sent date and time. Uh, so we we fixed that now. We've sent date and time are accurate. Completed date and time are accurate. Never the twain shall meet. Yes. See, we got you. Yep. We got you. Gotcha. Hosted or in-person signing event envelopes not showing an envelope status lightning component. Yes, another envelope status thing. Um, another envelope weird one. Envelope status has been naughty. <laughs> On the naughty list. It got, it got coal in its stocking, but yes. in 2022, it's just going to get a whole bunch of presents. because It already, is. This is about as much as you can fix it. it, it this, is, <laughs> this is what it does. Yep. Um, and, and this is another weird one, too. So when envelopes were sent by an in-person signer, or someone with the make the sender the host mm -hmm. box checked, yep. uh, the recipients did not appear in the DocuSign envelope status lightning component. So you didn't see them in there. Um, and now the envelopes appear in the DocuSign envelope status lightning component. So, yeah, so now if someone is an in-person signer or the make the sender the host um, box is checked for the recipient, now the envelope will appear in the DocuSign envelope status lightning component. Um, so yeah, again, these are, these recipient types aren't used as often, but when they were, the envelope wasn't showing in the in the uh, envelope status component, and uh, and now they do, Yay! like they're supposed to. Yay! I love it. Ooh. I love it. Next one up is envelope template source template recipients lacking an, an email are blocked from sending. Yeah, this is another one. Um, when you're when you're creating an envelope, um. If uh, a contact or a user that you are including as a recipient did not have an email address mm -hmm. assigned to them in Salesforce, mm -hmm. um, it would just, in the past, you couldn't proceed with the the adding of them as a recipient in the recipient model. Uh, it would just be frozen and you could only close it. So now when you, when you add the, uh, the recipient uh, email address, yeah. it moves forward with the modal of adding them as a recipient. You, you can go ahead and add them. Awesome. And all is well. Yes. All is well that ends well. Mm -hmm. Your document signed. And that was it. Oh my that was god. It. That was I, it. The record. Is this like the shortest video we've done? Maybe. I think we say that every time. But uh yeah. maybe are we just getting more efficient? We're working um smarter, not harder. Maybe. I we think that be should be our motto for harder. this year. This is the harder, theme, not harder. For this video at least. This, <laughs> yeah. The theme for this video is smarter, <laughs> not harder. Definitely. Um, why why repeat something uh, when you don't need to, right? Like uh, if you've already done the work, uh, the work is there and, and you just need to just, just touch on it and move on. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. So we've done a lot in 2021 to make 2021. 2022 an absolutely amazing year for our customers. Yeah. Um, I'm so happy the L's were working well. I was eating chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, I will link the release notes below um, or above. I will release, I will link the release notes somewhere in this post. Um, release the release notes. Release the Kraken. No. Release the hounds. Yes. Um, but Greg, as always, thank you so much for coming and breaking it down and talking us through the release updates. Of really appreciate it. Um, of course. I think this is like the most fun of my job is just getting to hang out with you, Greg. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> I think I mean I mean reading is fundamental, but reading release notes is is, is not fun. I mean it's yeah. not fun, right? You know, it might be yeah. fun, but it's not fun. Yeah. So. And sometimes you're like you're scratching your head going, but what does that mean? What does it really mean? What's it mean? I'm like, yeah. I'm like nightmare before yeah. I used to I used to work support and sometimes you get into a, a, a a conversation over online with the customer and you finally would just say let's just have a call yeah and then you get on the call and you're like this is the scenario and they're like oh okay and then you fix it yeah exactly so that's why i like to do these videos these with are. that thank you so much greg i really appreciate you if you're watching this don't forget to like and subscribe Ding! Ding. um and we will be going over the next release notes at the next release um, they're already and they're hard at work on the next release they are yeah. I'm telling you, we, we really should give the elves a break. <laughs> <laughs> but also, there's going to be weekly videos and Quick Tip Tuesdays and a whole lot of content coming for 2022. So stay tuned. All right. Yeah.